This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. The order of payables, almost the reverse of the order of receivables, uh, with some, some important differences. In the order of receivables, <coughs> in the order of receivables, our prime concern is if we don't overstate the value of receivables. The danger with receivables is that something is appearing as an amount due from a customer which will never be paid. Uh, with the order of payables, our fear, our danger, is that we exclude a payable uh, and that therefore the payables are understated. However, uh, first things first, we would reconcile the detailed balances in the ledger, the sum of those, to the control account. Uh, again, the total creditors figure, the total payables figure, doesn't actually exist. It's maybe made up of a hundred, several hundred uh, of individual payables balances. And we have to make sure that the figure that's in the financial statements, which is a total figure, uh, is actually made up of a number of discrete payables balances. And it's those which we're primarily going to be attacking and auditing. Uh, we'll look at uh, correspondence. Uh, look at correspondence with our suppliers. Uh, there may be payables which have been outstanding for a long time at some point, uh, where we are telling our suppliers, look, you didn't supply uh, raw materials of the right quality, we're not going to pay this, or we want to uh, get 50% off, or whatever it's going to be. Uh, we might have uh, corresponding with our suppliers saying, look, we've already paid this and so on. But anything which is a, a kind of an issue uh, on these payables balances is, is, is worth looking at. And if it's a really big issue, if you've got a really large shipment of raw material worth a lot from a supplier and you found it was of inferior quality, you'd expect that uh, matter to be escalated up to the board where they, they would have some sort of policy on it. Payables period, this is the uh, analytical procedure you'd look at here. Uh, if the payables period both years is about 40 days, then that's giving you some satisfaction that payables are probably right. Uh, but if payables uh, were to decrease substantially, uh, you have to wonder why. If payables days were to decrease substantially, you have to wonder why. Why are we suddenly paying these people far earlier this year than previously? And the, the real fear is not that we're paying them earlier, which which is worth finding out. The real fear is that the payables period has fallen because we have left out some payables and, and the payables balance that's being reported is too small. Statement reconciliation, this is uh, great. Uh, it's again a third party uh, written confirmation coming from your suppliers telling you what they think you owe them. There will of course be small timing differences again. Uh, but uh, in some countries, the receipts of uh, statements from suppliers is so normal, so common, uh, that this stands in the place of doing a payable circularization. It's not quite as good, maybe, as a circularization, because, of course, these documents are not going straight to the auditor. They're going straight to the client, who then passes them on. And the client could be throwing away statements which are in disagreement. Uh, but uh, statement reconciliation is a powerful source of um, evidence. I'll put in here because it, the, the, the habit differs a little bit between different different countries to some extent. Uh, but you can also do here a payables circularization. Done very much the same way as a debtor's circularization, receivable circularization. This is where the auditor asks the client to write to suppliers, to write to people to whom they owe money, and to confirm the amount owing at a particular date. And the supplier will write back directly to the auditor, uh, confirming that amount, we hope. Payments after year end, uh, another uh, test of detail really, uh, if uh, we're saying that we owe somebody 10,000 uh, and this stems from an invoice, let's say about the 2nd of December, still outstanding uh, at the end of December, 
uh, then we would probably expect to see some cash going out sometime in January. And the fact that the cash has gone out is giving us some evidence that the payable did actually exist at year end. And then we have all the tracings that we can do uh, here. We can trace items on the payables ledger. Why does it get there? How does it get there? Well, it, 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 it must be there uh, really because of an invoice. And the invoice is there because of the goods received note. And the goods received note is there because we placed an order. If a payable comes off the uh, payables ledger, it must have been paid. Uh, so we can trace payments to and from the cash book uh, to see uh, why have they taken this payable out on, let's say, the 15th of December. Ah, oh, yes, they, they say it's come from the cash book. Let's look at the cash book and see that money going out to that supplier. We can also, for the sake of completeness, trace the other way. If you have a Go to the file of orders, you know, lay orders quite late on, maybe orders in November, December. Trace that to maybe a receipt of goods in December, a um, goods received note, delivery note. Uh, and we would expect to see uh, probably an invoice that's come in in December. We'd expect to see that uh, in the payables ledger. Again, these tracings are all tests of detail.